two middle-aged married men are having small talk at a small dinner party. And one man, he looks at the other and he says, hey, I've noticed that you and your wife have a, a very good relationship. Don't you guys have any differences? And the other guy, he says, of course we have differences. We have them all the time. We just get over them very quickly. And the other guy says, really? How do you guys do that? He says, simple. I don't tell her that we have differences. We can choose peace or we can choose contention. The Lord is the Prince of Peace, and I'm not saying avoid conflict. I'm saying choose peace. The spirit of, the, of contention is of the devil and is usually rooted in pride, arrogance, or one's desire to be right. Uh, one of my wife's favorite scriptures is Philippians 4, 6, and 7, which in the New International Version it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, in this passage, the Apostle Paul, he doesn't say, pray to God and then worry about everything. No, he says, pray and don't worry and let his peace come upon you. Prayer is a, a powerful force. And... Um, in James 3, we're told, 3.18 actually, we're told that, that the fruit of righteousness is sown by peace. How do we sow the seeds of peace? Well, I wouldn't even call it choosing our battles. I would call it choosing our peace. See, what separates us, human beings, from animals is our ability to choose. There's a space in between stimulus and reaction. So something happens, we choose how we react. If we continuously react confrontationally, well, chances are we're going to sow the seeds of confrontation or conflict or contention. But if we take a second and let the peace which passeth all understanding, the peace that Jesus Christ gave us, the gift of the Holy Ghost, he purchased our anxieties, okay? He has paid for our conflicts. Don't make his atonement uh, be a sacrifice made in vain. Choose to become more like him. A parent wants to see his children grow, regardless of how much that parent loves his child. And as we grow in spiritual maturity, we will turn to God and we will be thankful in our afflictions. We'll be thankful um, for our wives or our husbands. I mean, think about it for a second. If you're about to have an argument with your spouse, what would happen if right before you're about to go off, they just said something that just either annoys you, you don't agree with, or, or it's debatable. And instead of going into the debate, you stop and you say, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me a spouse to disagree with. There are widows, orphans, there are people out there who've never been married. At least I have a spouse. You see that shift? That's that choice that we have. Are you going to be able to do it every time? No, you're not. Don't expect yourself to be perfect. I don't expect you to be perfect. I'm not perfect. I, <laughs> I, I have pride and arrogance just like anybody else. I try my hardest. I give it my all. When I stand before the Lord, I'm going to be able to look at him and say, 
Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you for dying for me because I messed up. I wasted my time. I caused contention. And I was imperfect. And I sinned like no other. And he's going to look at me and said, Nick, I watched you. And I paid for you. And you did the best you could. Thank you for coming to me often and asking for my help. I testify to you in the name of Jesus Christ that if you will come unto Christ and ask him for help, he will strengthen you. He will give you peace. You don't have to sow these seeds of peace all by yourself. No, he gave us the comforter, even the Holy Ghost. And I testify to you that that Holy Ghost is a spirit of peace. And if you are feeling contentious, and you, if you're in the heat of debate, even if you are debating the scriptures, if there is not peace, I challenge you to invite the Holy Ghost. And I testify to you, if you invite him, you will experience the peace that passeth all understanding, as the Apostle Paul has promised us. You're a child of God, an heir of the throne of heaven. You are a joint heir with Christ. You are more than you know that you are. You are awesome. You are loved. You are worthy. You are beautiful. You are unique. You are wonderfully made. You're a child of the Most High. And I am thankful for you. God bless you, my friends.